The next presenter is Alison Ryan, and she is going to talk about the use of barley straw for control of HABs. Thank you, Alison. Ryan, I'm delighted to participate in this Watershed Ecology Summit. I've been very impressed and inspired by the expertise and ecological commitments of so many of the prior speakers. My own relevant expertise is actually pretty minimal. However, I have indeed been quite active in water chestnut mitigation efforts uh, for like at least the past 25 years, which alas has brought me in very close contact with the increasing problem of cyanobacteria and their toxic blooms, which typically occur in the very same waters where we are foraying for water chestnut. Similar conditions favor the growth of both, which would be warm, stagnant, shallow, and over-nutrified water, where um, phosphorus has already played a leading role in other people's comments, and it is often the rate-limiting factor as far as cyanobacteria are concerned. So this, uh, Conflict has led for, to, for me and many other water chestnut workers to have to curtail, abandon our water chestnut mitigation efforts in the last several years. As a neurologist, which I am, um, I've become especially alarmed by the myriad associated health hazards of cyanobacteria, as well as all the ecological disruptions and economic disruptions. So, uh, I've been researching the topic for a few years, trying to understand its complexities and to promote awareness. And over the past few months, I've been focusing more on what we might do proactively to mitigate the cyanobacteria toxin problem, hence this talk. So I feel, I trust, I have no need to convince this audience that uh, decreasing algae and cyanobacteria blooms in our local waters would in fact be desirable, but I'd still like to start with a few points, um, uh, which I call the toxin victims. You may have recalled about a year ago, 330 elephants were found dead in Botswana, and you can see two of them lying by the uh, cyanobacteria uh, bloom in their water hole. Uh, over the past 30 years, there's been mysterious die-off of bald eagles and many other birds in the southeast U.S. Uh, finally, last year, determined to be uh, caused by a new uh, cyanobacteria species, by new, I mean newly discovered, identified, um, which uh, is symbiotic with the water plant hydrilla. Um, and not only is it a new, quote, species, but a new, quote, neurotoxin. And um, this has actually caused a new bird disease. So unfortunately, as hydrilla is moving northwards, I believe it's in Connecticut, maybe also in Massachusetts by now, we can expect this um, particular cyanobacteria species to be um, showing its uh, potential as well. Um, dogs, it appears, are extremely sensitive to a lot of the cyanobacteria toxins. So they have a great deal of morbidity and mortality. One mouthful can kill a dog. Humans, there's a myriad of effects, but um, ALS, which is uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, is the one that really got my attention. Um, they've identified no. Zoom. neurotoxin um, uh, BMAA, which is to date the only known uh, environmental cause of ALS, and it was found in the vets returning from the Iraq war, uh, which they got from the endocrests of the deserts in Qatar, um, aerosolizing the cyanobacteria toxins there. Anyway, um, the next one is a question mark, but you may have heard the story of these two very skilled hikers with their one-year-old and their dog who died while hiking near Yosemite uh, about a month ago, and the leading culprit for their death is felt to be cyanobacteria toxin, uh, final verdict pending. And then from <laughs> a very big uh, perspective, the last uh, great die off, which was 250 million years ago at the end of the Permian era, uh, in which about 90% of all the species then on earth uh, were killed, 
or disappeared. Um, it was associated with a similar um, explosion of cyanobacteria per the fossil records, similar to what is happening now, according to you know, some scientists who are sounding the alarm. Um, and then bringing it right back to home, this is my arm. And that red rash is a, is a streak that appeared about an hour or two after a single drop of water from Magnolia Pond trickled behind the, like, the gloves that I had that were elbow length gloves, but one drop from my kayak paddle trickled through and caused this rash. Um, so barley straw. Barley straw has been shown to be what's called an effective algae stat. That means uh, preventing growth. It is not an algae side, which means killing algae. Barley straw has many attractive uh, aspects. It's eco-friendly, it's natural. It has no toxicity on other life forms, just on single cell photosynthetic organisms, which by definition are algae and cyanobacteria, which of note are indeed photosynthetic bacteria. Uh, Barley straw is not an herbicide. It's not regulated in any, in any way. It is fairly simple to use, and there are very well established protocols dating back to the 1990s when the original research was done in England. There are, have accumulated ample data supporting its effectiveness in ponds, lakes, and streams. The EPA lists it on their um, website for harmful uh, algae bloom control uh, as effective and uh, doesn't mention any downsides of significance. You know, barley straw is actually in very common usage for small ponds, aquaria, livestock, water tanks, golf course, water features. If you Google uh, barley straw, uh, the first thing that will come up is Amazon trying to sell you little packets of barley straw or their barley straw extract for exactly this purpose. However, um, to me, it seems that um, for the large, you know, the ponds and lakes um, around here, at least, it's pretty much under recognized and underutilized. So how does it work? Well, uh, not entirely worked out, but the key is a slow decomposition of barley, and it has to be barley, not the other cereals or grains. It needs to occur in water, which has sufficient oxygen, has to have enough sunlight, the right temperature, which is a pretty big range, and the right bacteria, which are ubiquitous in the water at all times in any case. There is a slow release of chemicals, and one of them has been identified as humic acid. Uh, and eventually, the end product that, that is the way it works, we think, is, they think, is uh, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Um, and they think that the lignin of the barley straw is probably the source of, these, um, of this chemical reaction chain. So the release occurs in concentrations which prevent the growth of most green, especially the planktic algae, um, and many of the most worrisome cyanobacteria species, um, but the ones that are microcystins and that's the liver toxin category and anabina, which is the neurotoxin category. The concentration is very dilute, only two parts per million. Uh, I did mention barley straw extract, which um, works. It works much faster, but it's very expensive and not practical for large bodies of water. And furthermore, it requires multiple applications after every three weeks or so. So, um, there are always devils in the details, and for barley straw success, um, here is what I've gleaned from a review of the literature, which is not always consistent, but roughly two to four 50 pound bales per surface acre of water is the recommended dose. You don't want to overdose, um, and you want to use the least amount necessary for the task at hand. The barley straw should be divided into loosely packed portions in, for example, um, a not, well, a, in a non-biodegradable thing, such as a mesh onion bag, allowing for plenty of water circulation and exposure of the barley straw to the water. And you want to put it in uh, about two to four feet water depth around the perimeter of the body of water. 
and it should be anchored with a rock perhaps and somehow uh, floated at least in the deeper waters with something. And you want to deploy the barley straw about two to six weeks prior to when you expect the blooms to occur. Uh, as I mentioned, it does not work on established blooms. And that is actually a good thing because if you have an established bloom of cyanobacteria, which is uh, full of toxins, then if you um, destroy the cell wall or the membrane, um, you simply release the toxins and disperse them more uh, diffusely into the water and into the air. And unfortunately, aerosolized toxins um, are a real hazard. And I mentioned ALS, and it's the aerosolized version of BMAA that has been found to be the culture information culture yeah. ALS. It's actually important for the dogs. Um, this uh, toxin. Um, the, um, it's best if the water is flowing at least a little bit or, or not totally stagnant and well aerated. Usually only one application per season around here is required and the bags should re be removed after they've done their work after about six months to prevent any unnecessary further nutrification, which of course, uh, by putting barley straw in the water, you are adding some organic biomass, which is um, in, in general, not what you want to be doing. So here are two different um, images from the literature. The one on the left is the onion uh, bag with some barley straw anchored with a rock. And the one on the right is um, mats of, of barley straw. They look like they're about four inches by you know, a couple of feet uh, by a foot. Um, and these are best, um, or they're, they're promoted for use in streams which are flowing into a body of, like a pond and um, sort of cutting things off at the source and maximizing the dispersion into the body of water. So we have a, uh, over the past three months, as I mentioned, I've been um, talking to a lot of people about this. And so far we have a, a local barley straw project and here's the current status report. Um, representatives of several uh, local bodies of water um, are um, on board and you know potentially these bodies of water will be involved. Warner Pond, um, I'm putting some estimates that I made up, um, you know about a half, a little less than half of the 70 acres. Nashuanic and East Hampton about half. Uh, Triangle and Magnolia, um, so far it's triangle that's the problem as far as known cyanobacteria uh, blooms. Um, I and my uh, co-water chestnut warrior, Lily Dwight, have uh, for the past three years identified um, cyanobacteria in triangle. And um, it's really at a pretty well defined point source, well, not quite point, but one small part of, the, of that pond. So I believe we can target selectively. Great Pond is in um, Hatfield. Bachelor Brook is very small, but it's right at the mouth of the Connecticut and it is loaded with water chestnut and um, also with, uh, we think, some cyanobacteria. Pine Island, uh, private lake in West Hampton, uh, the Oxbow in Arcadia, uh, just preliminary discussions as far as that goes. And uh, uh, there's going to be a uh, participation uh, by um, Jacqueline Burmeister in Worcester, uh, and she wants to do one of her ponds. So we're talking about eight, 60 to 80 acres to be targeted, and we'll be targeting the sections known to be subject to recurrent blooms. So far, we have $2,500 committed to date, which is enough for um, purchasing 250 bales of barley straw. Uh, Aliki Fournier of the CRC is our project manager. Um, lab support is being provided for free by Jacqueline Burmeister of Worcester's GPWMP. Um, and um, already we've submitted six baseline samples to her lab, which uses something called FlowCam, which is a device which I don't quite understand, but it apparently takes only one milliliter of water and then, uh, you know, does some photographic analysis and other kind of analysis to um, identify all the species of whatever's in there um, by name and by number. 
Um, the other thing we're doing is exploring the use of some sort of pre and post aerial photos using drones, obvious choice. Um, and in this regard, I have preliminary uh, conversations with John Karras, who's at Smith, who runs what's called the Spatial Analysis Lab. And he's very um, uh, enthusiastic about uh, being involved, at least at the consulting level with our project, which eventually I'm hoping might include using spectral analysis to distinguish green algae from um, cyanobacteria. Both have chlorophyll, but they're different uh, molecules of chlorophyll, which have different spectral signatures. And currently, satellites deployed throughout the world are doing um, satellite imaging, also distinguishing cyanobacteria from other green stuff in the waters of the planet. Um, so what are we even talking about? So on the left is uh, the cyanobacteria bloom most recently identified by me and Lily in, um, in um, Triangle. And then there's just some algae on the right side. Um, so getting even nitty in, into the more nitty gritty logistics, um, uh, we've sourced the barley straw from Thrall Family Farms in Windsor, Connecticut. Um, and they um, agreed to hold about uh, they agreed to hold 400 bales at $10 a bale for spring 2022 delivery. We probably won't need that much. Valley Malt uh, in Hadley, or a Valley Malt in Hadley, um, has very, very kindly um, agreed or volunteered to provide her depot in Holyoke warehouse, I guess, to receive the delivery of the barley straw in mid-April um, and serve as a, let it serve there as a staging venue for putting the barley straw into, to prepare it for deployment. And she'll sponsor a volunteer day um, for this activity with publicity and provide a food and even a beer cart. Um, there is, of course, labor required of preparing the BS packets from the uh, bales, loading it into trucks, probably mostly, maybe some boats, transporting and positioning it in the bodies of water, um, um, and retrieving them, hopefully mostly empty packets in October. There are a lot more details to be determined, including the amount of barley straw per packet and the optimal distribution of packets at each site, um, taking into account you know, other um, considerations such as competing uh, water use preferences like fishing and swimming and uh, aesthetics. Um, we will certainly need a lot of stakeholder cooperation, a lot of volunteers, a lot of onion bags, and some rocks, and maybe twine, and maybe some floats, certainly more public awareness and support. Um, um, with that, I'd like to conclude at, by thanking a lot of people, um, all of whom have uh, been encouraged, have encouraged me or educated me, supported me in some way for this effort. And um, top of the list would be Jason Johnson and Aliki um, Fournier. And I'd like to also mention Cynthia and Jeff Blattner, who have been extremely helpful. And Andrea Starkey of uh, Valley Malt, who is so generous. Um, Spencer Thrall, who uh, will be selling us the barley straw, but uh, agreeing to hold it over winter with uh, without additional storage charge and with free delivery in the spring um, and with no commitment or prepayment required, um, which seems very generous. Paul Nowak is uh, the head of Nashawana Pond Steering Committee. He's very much uh, on board with this. Dean Ryan of um, Fish and Wildlife has committed um, resources and money. Jeff Zessiger is of Pine Island and he actually got me in touch with John Karras at Smith Spatial Lab, and um, Pine Island may or may not want to be more directly involved. Hilary Snook of the EPA um, has been very helpful with um, help in getting samples of suspicious um, cyanobacteria to him in his lab in the eastern part of the state for definitive analysis. Uh, Jacqueline Burmeister of Worcester um, has a lot of expertise in um, algae bloom 
uh, litigation, but has yet to try barley straw and she's excited to do so. Um, I'd like to just thank Harrison Bardwell for um, listening to me and saying that although he wasn't interested in personally growing barley, he had several ideas and um, headed me off towards uh, Andrea Starkey. And then um, I'd like to thank, um, I'd like to thank um, all the friends who <laughs> have listened patiently and with at least the appearance of interest in my enthusiasm and waxing lyrical about the potential of barley straw. And of course to Lily, who is my, um, has been with me every step of the way, um, carting you know, thousands of pounds of, probably thousands of pounds of water chestnuts out of our local waters for years and now on board with the barley straw project. So with that, um, there are some selected references. That was wonderful. I think we're all honestly very interested in this because it affects all of us who paddle or fish who are, who are near water. Thank you very much. I'm going to suggest two of the questions to Alice and go through the chat 